Hi friends, it's Miss Tujo, a kindergarten teacher with St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. And today we're going to learn how to use our observations, or what we see, to describe what plants and animals need to survive. We're actually going to learn how to use those observations to determine or decide if something is a living or non-living thing. So to start, let's review what living things need to survive. Living things need air to breathe. Living things also need water to drink. Living things need food or nutrients to eat. And living things need shelter or a place to live. And remember, shelter can look very different for different types of living things. Like I am a living thing and I live in a house. But a crocodile or an alligator lives in the water, and plants live in the ground and the soil. So shelter looks different for different kinds of living things. Today we're going to be talking about the characteristics of living things. Characteristics are what something has in common or what a group of things has in common that makes it what it is. So today we're going to talk about the things that living things have in common and the things that non-living things have in common. Well, first, you're probably wondering, first, what is a living thing? Well, let's look at the word living. Living, living, live. What do you think a living thing is? That's right, a living thing is something that is alive. So if I'm looking over here at the word non-living things, non-living, Non, what does non mean? Non means not. So not living. That's right, non-living things are not alive. Now let's look at the characteristics of living things and non-living things so we can decide if an object is a living or non-living thing. First, let's look at living things. Living things eat, which is why they need food to survive. Living things can move on their own by themselves. They don't need any help. Living things can grow and change. Again, that's why they need food and water is to help them grow and change. And living things breathe, which is exactly, that's why they need air is to breathe. So if those are the things that living things all have in common, those are the characteristics of living things, let's look at the characteristics of non-living things or what non-living things have in common. Non-living things do not move on their own. They need a little bit of help if they're gonna move. They do not eat or drink, so they don't need what? That's right, they don't need food or water to survive. And they do not breathe, so if they don't breathe, they don't need air, that's right, they don't breathe. Well, right now, I have some pictures here and I'm going to sort these pictures and decide if they are living or non-living things on my chart here. Now, I want you to listen and watch as I think aloud as I sort my pictures. And I'm going to use my observations or what I see and know to sort the pictures. Okay? So, my first picture is a mushroom. A mushroom. Now I know I can see that a mushroom is growing in the ground and I remember that I've seen mushrooms outside. So if a mushroom starts little and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger, it must be getting the food and nutrients from the soil. So just from those observations, I'm going to say that a mushroom is a living thing. Now, my next one is a cloud, a cloud. Now, I know that I've seen a cloud move across the sky, but when I think about it, I don't think the cloud moves on its own. I think the cloud has to be pushed by something. Do you know what it has to be pushed by? That's right, it has to be pushed by the wind. The wind moves the clouds. And I know that clouds don't breathe and they don't eat, so a cloud must be a non-living object. So I'm going to put it over here on the side with non-living things. Next, 
an umbrella. I know that I hold an umbrella and I know that umbrellas um, don't eat, they don't breathe, they can't drink anything because they just push the water off of me. So an umbrella must be a non-living thing. So we have two non-living things and one living thing. Let's look at another one. A ladybug, a ladybug. Now, I know that bugs start out as an egg, then the larva hatches, and then it grows and it changes until it becomes the adult type of bug or insect. So I know that in order to do that, that insects or bugs have to eat, they have to breathe, and they grow and they change. Also, insects move because I see insects crawling and flying. So insects, must, any insect must be a living thing. So I'm gonna put it on the living thing side. Next is a kite. A kite is an object that flies through the air. But I know that when a kite flies through the air, I have to be pulling the string and pull it through the wind and through the air in order for it to fly. So a kite doesn't move on its own. A kite doesn't eat, it doesn't breathe, it doesn't drink water, and it doesn't grow and change. It's just whatever I made it to be. So a kite would be a non-living thing. Let's look at the next one. Sunglasses, sunglasses. I know I wear sunglasses on my face when it's sunny outside and it's bright, but do sunglasses move on their own? No. Can sunglasses eat or breathe? No. Well, based on those observations, I'm going to say that sunglasses are non-living things. Okay, let's see. We have one, two, three, four non-living things and one, two living things. Let's see what we have next. A flower, a flower. I see flowers outside all of the time, and I know that flowers have roots that grow down into the ground, and those roots are how they soak up the water and the nutrients or food that helps them to live and grow and change. So by those observations that they grow and change, they need food and water, they need air, I'm going to say that a flower is a living thing. And I'm going to put it on the side by living things. This is my last picture. Are you ready? My last picture is a duck. A duck. Now I know that a duck is a kind of bird. I know that birds fly. I know that they hatch from eggs and then they grow until they become an adult animal or an adult bird. So. I also know that they need water to drink and food to grow and change. So by those observations, I'm going to put the duck on the side by the living things. Look there. I have one, two, three, four living things and one, two, three, four non-living things. Now that we've sorted these together, let's go out and see if we can find some more living things and non-living things to sort. I'm gonna go outside and help find some objects and we're gonna do this together now. Are you ready? All right, I'll see you in a minute. We are outside in front of my house. Let's see if we can find some things that are living and non-living around in my yard. What do you see? You see a house? I see the house too. Now, do you think a house is a living or a non-living thing? Let's think. Do houses eat? No, houses don't eat. Do houses breathe? No. Can a house move by itself? No, don't think so. So is a house a living or not living thing? That's right, a house is a non-living thing. Now let's look behind the house. What do you see big and tall behind the house? Yes, we see some trees. We see trees. 
Are trees living or not living? A tree is a plant, so a tree needs sunlight, it needs air, they need water to get nutrients so that they can eat. So a tree is a? A living thing, that is correct. Let's see what else we can find. Do you see the lizard on the hose? Is the lizard a living thing or a non-living thing? Let's observe it for a second and see what it does. Oh, I see his head moving. So he moves on his own. What else? What do you think the lizard is looking for? Maybe some food or some water? Well, if he can move and he's breathing and he's looking for food and water, what would that make him, living or non-living? Yes, a lizard would be a living thing. Now, what about the water hose? Is the water hose a living or a non-living thing? That's right, it's a non-living thing. A water hose can't move on its own. A water hose doesn't breathe. And a water hose does not need food or water to survive. Do you see that right there underneath the light on the wire? It's a bird. Let's listen. Can you hear the bird making noises? Do you see the bird moving? If the bird is moving and can fly on its own, it's making sounds so we know it's breathing. What do you think? Is it a living or non-living thing? Yes, a bird is a living thing. Hi boys and girls, on my way back inside, I thought of something that I wanted to show you, but shh, we have to be real quiet because I've snuck into my son's room and I really want to show you this thing. Are you ready? My son has a red-eared slider turtle that he keeps in his room in an aquarium and his name is Mikey. Mikey has food and you can see him right now trying to move in my hand. You see him? He wanted to be on screen too. You see him moving? So what do you think Mikey is? That's right, using our observations we learned that living things move and they grow and they change and they eat and they drink water. So looking at those observations, Mikey would be a living thing. And you can see him moving. He's trying to get back into his aquarium. So I'm gonna put him back real quick and I have one more thing to show you. There you go, Mikey, back in your house, in your shelter. All right, the last thing I want to show you is this. This is in Mikey's aquarium. And you might think, oh, that's a live plant. But look, it's just a plastic plant that's just stuck in this little fake rock here. So since it doesn't have roots, it doesn't really need water to survive, this would be a non-living thing. And we know that because like I said, it doesn't have roots sticking out the very bottom. It's got little fake ones at the top here, but it doesn't have any real roots. It doesn't really drink water. So since it doesn't drink water and it doesn't grow at all, that makes it a non-living thing. So sometimes things might try to trick you a little bit, and when they do, you have to really think about your observations so that you know whether it really is a living or a non-living thing. Okay, I'm back. Did you enjoy finding living and non-living things outside with me? I'm so happy you enjoyed that. Well, guess what? On my way back inside, I picked up just a few things to um, show you, and I wanted to talk to you about those now because your challenge for this week is to go around your house or outside in your yard and to find living and non-living things and to sort them on your own. That's your challenge. So just walking into the house, I found these few things. I found a stick. I picked some flowers and see it's got the roots and everything so I can plant it back so it doesn't die. And I found some rocks. Those are a few things just to help you get started with your challenge. 
I look forward to seeing how you sort your living and non-living objects. Make sure to send them to me so I can see. I will see you next time. Bye.